All right, all right, all right. Hello, my fellow mushy blobs of earth molecules. My name is Hans, father of the plants, always hoarding all the teal bricks, and berserk for Legos. Today I'm going to show you guys a build tutorial on my working elevators with glass line doors, teal brick style. So kick back, grab your pen and notepad, and let's elevate your knowledge. Okay, origin story time. So I developed this elevator when I was designing my Paradisa City Hospital. I definitely recommend you go watch my Paradisa City Hospital playlist. There is four videos in it. In part three of the third video, you get to see the elevator zipping up and down 10 floors. And actually that hospital has two elevators and they're much bigger than this. One's a staff elevator because it has to carry all the stretchers with the patients and all that stuff. So for this one, I decided to try and get this elevator as compact as possible. So first things first, I'll go over the key details and dimensions. I've already built the first floor and then I'll give you a build tutorial on the second floor and then as well as the roof component that has the lifting mechanism. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I am planning on building a Lego city called Paradisa City, which is a tropical futuristic city in the year 2060. And it's going to have a lot of high-rise buildings, so you can definitely expect to see a lot of elevators in Paradisa City. Also, quick disclaimer, I don't plan on doing very many tutorial videos. My channel isn't really about doing tutorials. I decided to make an exception for this elevator. There aren't a lot of elevator tutorial videos on YouTube. And for anybody who is aspiring to put an elevator in their high-rise buildings, I think I came up with a really nifty solution and I wanted to share it with you guys. So the key details of this elevator, one is that it's got the sliding glass door. The other is it's a glass elevator so that the occupants can look outside the building. It's designed to go along the outer wall and there will be windows and they can see outside of that. Now it doesn't have to be a glass elevator. You can have this at a solid wall right there. So this elevator is is a six by eight studs. And that is primarily driven by the fact that the sliding glass door needs to have room to slide off to the side. You can make a smaller elevator using uh, these wheels uh, technique. You just aren't going to be able to have a door that opens up. If you make it any narrower, then the door would only partially open and the occupants would have to <laughs> squeeze out of there. So if you want a smaller elevator, you'll have to ditch the sliding glass doors, in which case then it probably wouldn't have any doors, which could be uh, potentially dangerous for your minifigures. I'd hate for them to stick a hand in the wrong spot as the elevator's zipping up and down the floors and, and lose a hand. <laughs> Ah! So the other main feature are the eight sets of wheels, four on this side and four on the other side, that really help position as well as allow the elevator a smooth and low friction travel up and down the elevator shaft. Okay, so for the elevator shaft on each floor, some key details to this is that the inner dimension is going to be 10 by 7 for this 6 by 8 elevator. And if you were to include the outer wall dimension of this elevator shaft, it is a 9 by 12. And again, it's got the sliding glass door in here. You'll also see in my Paradise of City Hospital that the larger staff elevator actually has double sliding glass doors that both of them open to either side. Another key dimension to this is that I build a lot of my buildings to be eight bricks tall and then on top of that there's the plate as well as I tile my floors and it just so happens to be that the pin locations for the Technic rails inside the elevator shaft line up quite nicely in this eight brick tall floor. So if you wanted to build a shorter floor or a taller floor this upper Technic brick may not align nicely with with the rest of the bricks in there. You might have to space it out with some plates and stuff. Another important detail is that if you're building your first floor directly down on the first plate of the floor, you will need to either raise this entrance up by a couple of plates. And that is due to the fact that when this lands down at the bottom, you have to account for the standoff for this wheel as well as this floor plate itself. So that way the bottom of the door can line up perfectly with the bottom of the, the door here on, on the elevator entrance. So what you could end up doing for that is either your minifigures have to step up a couple of steps or a single step or you have a ramp or what you do is you build a thicker base and then have the elevator shaft sink down into it below uh, this floor level here. And without further ado, let's build the second floor. So I've already pre-assembled the floor here and as you can see, I've already prepared my 10 by 7 elevator shaft opening in the floor. Now this is just a cutaway and of course, obviously your building is going to be, you know, you're going to have a full floor built for your for your modular building or whatever building you're, you're building this for and uh, I built this you know you, basically the same way that the modulars are built you've just got a bunch of large plates you got a bunch of one by whatever and two by whatever is to assemble your floor with the elevator glass door is gonna have the rail on the same level as the floor tiles. And if you don't want to tile the inside floor of your building, you don't have to. So either you can leave this here and then your minifigures will just step up onto the entrance to the elevator by one plate. Or what you can do is design your 
your floor layout so that uh, this is level with the floor layout. And of course, it'll have to be attached by a plate on the bottom. All right, so this is the outer wall. So I'll go ahead and add the floor plates for the outer wall. And I have the front wall, which is where the elevator entrance is. And what I like to do is I like to color code each floor for my elevators. And so here you can see the second floor has a teal tile and it is two studs offset from the elevator shaft corner. Now I'll need to add these two one by one plates. Now let me really quickly demonstrate just how the elevator is going to line up inside of this elevator shaft. What I want you to notice is that gap in between the two rails, the rail from the sliding door on the floor and the rail from the sliding door on the elevator itself. And then of course you got a one brick gap here and this is where the wheels will go as well as the Technic alignment beams uh, on either side of there. And that gap is actually beneficial because these two will actually be almost touching because of the fact that the larger wheels on the elevator at the back are going to offset this elevator and give provide a tiny little gap right there and that basically helps keep this elevator floating right perfectly in the middle so it's not really hitting or causing too much friction on all the different uh, uh, surfaces inside the elevator shaft and that's what it allows it to run really smoothly okay now let's add the back wall I've already pre-assembled that and of course your back wall can be constructed in any way that you want it doesn't have to look like this it doesn't even have to have windows and one thing I'll note is that this window panel is hollowed out you want to be careful where you position this because because the wheels are going to be on this last stud location within the elevator shaft and rolling up the back of that wall. So you can have this window panel all the way over here and because of this little ledge right here on the window panel, the wheel will actually ride on that. But if you were to shift this window all the way beyond this and the wheel happened to be rolling across this intersection, then that would be problematic for the smooth operation of the elevator. Okay, so let's add the side walls. And here I think is a great use of the one by six by five wall panels as opposed to solid uh, brick built walls. I like to have solid brick built walls for all my interior walls but because this is just an elevator shaft it doesn't really matter to have a solid brick built wall and this is a great way to quickly build up your elevator shaft just by using this and it doesn't impact the uh, the wheels as they're rolling up and down the elevator shaft and of course here I've got a one by two by five brick and I've got a one by eight a one by six and a one by one and one key detail is that you do want to have all your walls all the way around the elevator shaft interlocking so on the next Next row of bricks they will interlock together you want to have this elevator shaft as rigidly square as possible so we'll add the second wall all right, so now we'll move on to the front. And this is where the sliding glass door is gonna be. Now, one thing to note is that we've raised this wall up by one plate. And so it is offset now from the, the other walls by one plate. So we'll add the left side. And this one by two Technic with dual pinholes is critical for, for having the Technic beams on the inside of the elevator shaft. And the reason why I'm using a one by two versus a one by one Technic beam is because a one by one Technic beam uh, has the ability to pivot and rotate due to the loose tolerances in there and by using a one by two this adds rigidity and keeps the technic beams as square as possible and then of course i've got a one by two brick here and you can add a couple of one by two bricks here although i'm using a one by two by two brick there's a one by one i've color coded it to be the matching floor color and of course i've got a headlight brick and for the right side We'll drop that in there. We've got the one by two Technic brick with the dual pinholes. You can have four one by two bricks in there, or as I'm using, I'm using one one by two brick in there and a one by two by three brick in there. So just to note, both of these are gonna be five bricks tall. And we'll add our fancy glass window right there. So now I'm ready to add the top rail that's gonna hold the sliding glass door in there. So what I've got here is a one by 10. I've added a one by one on either side. And now I'm gonna add my one by eight plate with a rail on it and that's going to go right there on the top so i'll grab my glass door kind of hold it in place and drop this guy down on top and there you go that's your sliding glass door now it's gonna it's gonna slide open up to about here because on the inside there's gonna be that technic beam uh, but it'll line up it'll it'll give your mini figures three studs of a door opening which is plenty of room for them uh, to walk into the elevator and as you can see on the elevator it's also got three studs of an opening all right and let's add the last brick on the seventh layer and then we can add our eighth and final row of bricks so we need to have the two one by two Technic bricks with the dual pinholes on there. And so now you can see that the Technic beams are gonna line up with this hole and that hole right there. 
and we've got our one by eight on the front, one by eight on the sides. And now you can see I've now interlocked this side wall with the back wall. Another one by eight. And on the back, we've got a one by 10. Now, another critical element to the elevator shafts is making sure that the elevator shafts from one floor to the other are perfectly aligned. And so the way we I do that is by adding these one by four plates with the only two studs on them. And that way, when you snap down the next floor, these studs are gonna align these walls with the elevator opening on the next floor up. All right, and now all we gotta do is just tile it up. And of course, these tiles are gonna go off into the re remaining part of the wall. Now, one thing to note is that when I build my buildings, I build the outer walls, and then I later on, I build the inner walls, and I don't connect the inner walls to the outer walls, because a lot of times the inner walls, I have to kind of design around a lot of things, and the design is always changing. And if I were to interlock my inner walls with my outer walls, then every time I would have to make a design change, then I'd have to basically tear down my outer walls at the same time. So one thing to note is that my elevator shaft, I do consider that to be part of the outer wall construction and so these are completely interlocked it is separate from the other inner walls so if i was to build say like an inner wall that meets up with the elevator shaft here i do not connect it i do not build it together and then i only connect it through the top tile plates here and this is because this has to be this elevator shaft has to be as rigid and strong as possible so i do want it to interconnect with the outer wall but it's not necessary to have it interconnecting with the inner walls and now for the technic rails for the inside of the elevator shaft so what i'm using Using here is, is a Technic beam that's nine pins long, as well as two Technic beams that are five pins long. And this is just what happens to work out for walls that are eight bricks tall, floors that are two plates thick, and the top layer of one tile. All in all, a total of nine bricks. All right, so here is how I go about and build that. So I'm using the nine pin long Technic beam. I'm using the, uh, the triple Technic pin and I will slide those through so that they are like so. I just use a regular Technic pin. Snap those two together. And for the next one, same thing. The Technic pin goes in the last location. And in this case, it's gonna be offset by one pin. And that's how you build it. So let's uh, install them. So I'm holding this at a funny angle just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. And voila, snapped in. And these elevator shaft rails help keep the elevator centered. They're also slightly narrow than a regular Technic brick. And so it gives it just an extra smidge of space in between the elevator. Okay, so when I insert the elevator, what you'll notice is that this larger wheel is offsetting the elevator by just a squeak. You get a nice little gap in there. So now the back of the elevator is not rubbing directly on this back wall. So there's no catching on the bricks, no snagging. Remember how I pointed out earlier, the two sliding door rails, the one on the floor and the one on the elevator itself have a little bit of a gap well that gap just got a little bit narrower but it's there's still a gap in there and this smaller wheel accounts for the fact that this bigger wheel is pushing the elevator forward and of course the technic beams help center the elevator uh, side to side. Now one cost saving measure is that you can do away with double stack of the Technic beams. You'd have to move this wheel one stud forward and then you would only have this Technic beam in here. But one reason why I did the double stack was for a floor that's eight bricks tall, a Technic beam that is 11 pins long would not line up and would not work from floor to floor. And the other reason is that this actually sticks up into the next floor. When you go to set the building down, it actually helps you align the two floors together uh, much quicker and easier. And the other thing to note is that these wheels and the axles that they're attached to are not a full brick in width and therefore there's actually you know a little bit of space in there as well so the elevator is not a super tight fit to the to the elevator shaft walls and so therefore it doesn't really snag on anything only instances is if the elevator because the because the elevator cable might pull it and cause it to tilt just a tiny bit within the elevator shaft and in those instances the two sliding door rails they might ever so slightly snag and sometimes you'll hear the rails smacking each other as it's going down through the floors. All right, so let me show you how I built the elevator itself. So this is a six by eight plate. I have the one by eight plate with the rail on it. I've got a one by four plate here, a one by eight plate on the back, and a one by four plate here. And then I've gone ahead and tiled the inside of the elevator. I'm using the 
two by two jumper plates. That's so I can get my little minifigures in there. So now I'm gonna add the wheels. And what I'm using is these fairly new one by two wheel axles. There's two other different wheel hubs that you can use for these. All right, so smaller wheel. And if you would notice, I have the one by one plates that go uh, on either side of the wheel plates. And since this is a glass elevator, I have a one by six by five glass panel and I've added a one by six plate. And for the two side walls, I also have the one by six uh, wall panels. And these are very convenient because then it allows the minifigures to stand right up next to the wall and still have room for their arms to fit inside of there. Of course, you would have to rearrange the jumper plates to be a little bit different. Second wall. And now let's add our wheels. Now I do want to mention that you can use the other axle plates. You can use this guy here. However, it's going to influence the, the height of the elevator. And the other thing is that if you were to use it down here, you would pretty much have to end up putting it on the very bottom of the elevator so it doesn't interfere with the inner floor. And if you stick these on the bottom, another consequence of that is it's gonna raise the entrance of the elevator on your first floor of your building a lot higher. So your minifigures are gonna to have to go a couple more stairs because you now have to account for a lot of extra height on the bottom of this. Okay, and I'll add the other plate layers. So a one by six, a couple of one by ones. And now let's focus on the front. So we got our nice little glass door right there. And now for the column that also holds the elevator floor level buttons. But before I do that, I wanted to show you a nifty little technique that I have developed. So one thing is that whenever you have a Lego brick or plate that only has a one stud connection on both the top and the bottom, it becomes difficult to get these perfectly aligned up. So I developed a technique that helps get these perfectly aligned with each other. So what I'll do is I'll put it on a, on a very flat surface and then using another brick that has a really flat surface, squish those down. And as you can see, they're now nicely aligned all with each other. Ever since I discovered this technique, now when I look at other people's Lego mocks and builds, and even on Lego's official set photos, I even start to notice how bricks are misaligned. And I'm just thinking, oh man, they really need to straighten those. In fact, I've even seen on official set photos where bricks are not even fully snapped together. I'm like, come on guys, you gotta have a keen eye for, for that. And the nice thing is that it speeds it up when you're building these sets and you have these one stud connections. You can assemble this really quickly, intentionally not trying to make them straight in the first place and then it's super fast and easy to squish those into alignment and sometimes i'll even come up with techniques to get them aligned perfectly within the set itself all right enough about that uh, let's go ahead and add oh look it's crooked let's squish it flat boom perfectly square with each other all right Cool. So now let's add the top rail for the glass sliding door. And here I've got the one by eight plate with a rail and underneath it is a one by six plate. So now we'll add the glass sliding glass door and it nicely closes off that entrance because it's only three studs. Now, if your opening happened to be four studs wide, then the glass door would have gaps on either side, which that's okay. I do have some elevators where that is the case. And now for the very top. So on the very top, you want to have the two by eight with the Technic holes on it. And that is so that you can tie down your elevator. Now, of course you could build uh, stuff on top, but this happens to be one of the stronger connections because this plate, which is supporting the whole weight of the elevator is going to be a attached here and here, as well as reinforcements here. So I'll go ahead and put those on. And of course I'm using two regular two by eight plates on either side of that. And I'm using, for the reinforcements, I'm using a one by two plate. And of course the symmetrical one by four bow and voila. This is the elevator. All right, so what am I using for the elevator cable? I'm using some string. Uh, somebody had said that this size string was uh, approximate to what Lego uses. So I got this off of Amazon and I will provide a link in the description of the exact string that I bought. I personally would have preferred a slightly thicker rated string, but it works well. Okay, and since I wanna keep the forces balanced, I want the string to be in the very center of the elevator. That would basically mean that I need to go through the two holes on either side of the very center hole. And then when I tie it off, it'll be pulling in the very center of the, of the plate.
All right, now let's do a roof that has the winch mechanism for the elevator itself. Now there's a number of different ways that you can do the winch mechanism. I've done several already. And the way I'm gonna show you now, uh, I have the winch going this way, and then I'm gonna put a motor right here. So to do that, I've added an extra one by 10 plate right here on this side. And I'll add the back wall. This is going to be the roof of the building. And for the same reason to hold the winch mechanism, I've used a 2x10 plate instead of a 1x10 uh, this time. And the elevator is going to stop at the last floor. And because my floor is 8 bricks tall, it's not going to end up hitting the top here. Alright, so we'll add the back wall here. Alright, and I'll add a 2x2 two two brick right there, and this will help support the elevator winch. And I'll add a 1x6 and a 1x4 for the corners. And I'll add another 1x6, another 1x4, and a 1x1 to build. And I've already got the other side pre-assembled. Forgot to note that this 2x2 two two is offset from the floor by one brick. And that's to help support the elevator winch. So I'm using three of the 1x2 Technic bricks with a pin in the center. And I've got an eight stud long Technic axle with the flat cap on the end. I've got a bushing here and here. And I've got the cable reel right there. And I've attached it like so. Now this cable reel is a little bit short. It's not a full two bricks wide. That's fine. And then the axle sticks out over here. And what I've done here is add a two by four plate. And this is what the Technic motor will mount to. And then you can build any sort of uh, rooftop or enclosure on here that you want to. So I'm just throwing a bunch of plates on here. You can do whatever you want on the top of that. Uh, cover it up some more. Just got to make sure that you have clearance for the top of that. Uh, winch reel. All right, and as you can see, I went ahead and attached the string in there. And I do want to note that you can use the Technic reel as well. All right, and now I'll add my Technic motor right there. All right, and I got my winch all wound up and the elevator is attached. Okay, let's install the elevator and the roof. So I'll just drop the elevator right in there. And here's what it looks like from the front. And open the sliding glass doors right there. And that's me ready to try out the new elevator. All right, here we go. We got the two floors assembled. Okay, and this finishes off my tutorial for the elevator, and I hope this inspires you guys to build more awesome elevators in your high-rise buildings that work really great and have nice little sliding glass doors. So on that note, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, give me some comments, let me know what you think of my elevator build, and thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll check you guys later. Now go forth and put elevators in all the things.